Hi there, I'm Marshall Thompson with PRVideo.tv and today's lesson is about sound. And I'm going to put on my headphones so I can hear myself better. Uh, I'm recording myself right now with two separate microphones. The first one is really obvious. It's this very high quality desk microphone. This is the kind of microphone that broadcasters use to capture sound in a sound booth. The important thing about microphones is where you place it. You want to get it as close as practical to the source of the noise, in this case, my voice. So, uh, this can be used for voice recording in a professional studio, or you can take it on the road with you as part of your kit. Not an inexpensive piece, probably around four or five hundred dollars for this, this unit right here. I'm also recording my sound today with this microphone right here. It is a Sennheiser wireless microphone. So the wireless microphone consists of the transmitter right here, the, the cable for the microphone plugs in there. This is the antenna so that you can transmit to the receiver that's mounted on top of the camera. It has an adapter to go on professional cameras as well as to plug into your standard kind of home camera. The most significant obstacle to getting good quality on your flip camera that's been part of this series is that the flip camera itself does not have a port on the side anywhere for an external microphone to plug into it. You can look all around, there's, there's nothing on the edges, there's no port anywhere where you can put an external microphone into it, which means that you are stuck with just using the microphones that are on the either side of the lens here on the HD model. And that is good if you're speaking and taking pictures like this, like I've uh, demonstrated a couple of times, but it's pretty lousy for recording sound with anything that's more than a few feet away. And that's why camcorders have these external inputs for putting external microphones into. So I wanted to show you a couple of the different options for miking sound. Uh, most of the time we want to mic human speech, like what I'm doing right now, using the special uh, voiceover kind of microphone or the wireless mic that I have right here. I've got another mic that's similar to the wireless mic. This one is a wired mic. It has the same kind of small microphone that goes on a tie clip right here uh, where you button your shirt. And then on the other end you have a power supply and it has three leads that connect to an XLR cable that then goes to your camera. Very, very high quality. Uh, this is a Sony model. It costs probably less about $250. This is the kind of, of, a, of a tool that you can buy that you can use for years, for 10 years. If you treat it carefully and don't break the little cable, uh, you can get very, very high quality for cameras that allow you to put an external microphone into the camera. Okay, a couple more things to show you. Uh, you may recognize this microphone. This microphone is the same kind that reporters use all around the world when they are uh, doing interviews with celebrities or with heads of state or anybody that's been in um, some sort of news event. Uh, this particular one is um, an RE50 which is an electro voice uh, mic, really high quality, and this is the kind of thing that you could spend $150 on and use it for a career. It's extremely durable. This thing has a shock resistant mounting so that it, you hear very little handling noise. So when, I'm, when you're using it in the field, you're not adding additional noise to the signal that's coming um, from the microphone itself, which is very, very good. It isolates the microphone from shock and vibration and from handling noise. RE50. Uh, here is uh, an example of what is called a shotgun microphone. It has a foam windscreen covering it and this is a Sennheiser uh, shotgun microphone, uh, very expensive, probably costs about $1,500 for the microphone and the power supply that goes with it. Fabulous sound. Now let me talk to you about what, um, what shotgun microphones do. It looks kind of like a pistol barrel or a rifle barrel. And while the microphone that I have right here can pick up sound from all around of it, 360 degrees, and uh, so can the, Sen the little Sennheiser microphone I have right here, the wireless, also picks up omnidirectionally. A shotgun microphone picks up as if you had a laser beam coming out of the front of it and you aim that towards the mouth of the person that's talking or the sound if you're using it to, to mic, say, a musical instrument. It rejects the sounds that are coming to it from the sides and so it's very highly directional. It only picks up noise from the front. 
And so this shotgun microphone you see on the end of poles at news conferences and that sort of thing, you see them on what's called a boom pole. So the boom pole operator holds the, uh, the pole, the microphone is on the end of it, and the, and the business end of it is pointing directly to the mouth of the person that's talking. I have another example of it, and you'll notice that uh, this is a, a, a less expensive model of a shotgun microphone extremely good quality instrument. You can buy one of these things and use it for a very, very long time. This device, so here's your shotgun microphone, right? This device is a windscreen. And uh, all microphones are subject to the movement of air across the microphone element itself. So when you're outside and you're trying to record some sound, you'll hear a lot of, you know, whoosh, whoosh, whooshy kind of wind noises that are mixed in with the person that's talking and that's very distracting and it makes it hard to understand what they have so you use your shotgun microphone and you put the windscreen on it and it is amazingly effective at masking the wind noise and uh, it's sort of all fuzzy kind of like a fuzzy kitty you like these little guys and uh, they're very, very effective. This is a Rycote Softy uh, brand name, a uh, professional brand name. And these are very, very good at reducing the wind noise and make you able to work in a windy situation and actually pick up good quality uh, audio. The bottom line is that in television production, if your audience cannot hear what is being said, they will leave. So in my opinion, when you have audio and pictures, audio is at least 60% of the experience. If you go to a movie that is not a great movie, but it has a fantastic soundtrack, you will stay. But you can have all the 3D imagery and, and wonderful uh, video images in the world, but if you cannot understand what is being said by the characters, you will leave. So that reinforces my belief that sound is at least 60% at least of the audiovisual experience. It's important to be able to monitor the quality of the audio that's going through, and that's why you wear these headphones. Uh, they're stereo, so you can hear both of the channels that are being used right now. And what that uh, helps you hear is that not just the quality of the voice that you're recording, but it also enables you to hear uh, defects like background noise that's interfering with what you're hearing, uh, buzzes that come from electronic equipment. If you take a, a, a microphone cord, let me just do a little demonstration here. If you take a microphone cord here and you lay this parallel to a power cable, like an extension cable for doing lighting, you can pick up the 60 cycle hum that is radiating from that power cable. So one thing that you want to be able to do, here's a trick that us professionals do, is that you cross your microphone cables at a right angle to your power cables in case they have to overlap one another in your setup. And that will help um, eliminate that 60 cycle hum. Great, so once you have your camera set up, you have your external microphones ready to go, you have the source of the sound and the microphone close together like we have right here. You hear the difference when I'm closer, it's a very strong signal. When I'm farther away, it's not as strong. And so then you can monitor your quality of sound with your headphones and you're ready to record. The next aspect of recording sound that's important is getting an appropriate level. Um, many cameras have automatic only audio level and there's not a lot you can do to defeat that. On my Sony V1U camcorder, it has XLR inputs on the side for audio, for two different audio channels. So right now I'm running this very nice desk mic on one channel and the other channel right there is running the Sennheiser wireless microphone. And each of those channels is independently controllable for loudness. It also has a control for switching for wind noise. The microphones I used in this demo are for professional use and they have professional price tags. Any external microphone that you can plug into your camcorder that gets your microphone close to the source of the sound is a good thing. So when you graduate out of using a, a, a very useful tool like the Mino flip camera to a camera that has um, separate audio inputs, you'll be able to use these external microphones I've been discussing. So that's it for now. I'm Marshall Thompson with PRVideo.tv. We'll see you next time.